Welcome back. In this tutorial, we're going to talk a little bit more about command line options. I know we had discussed them a little bit uh, with the line command, but we're going to talk about uh, command line options a little bit more in depth here. Um, and we're going to talk specifically about the rectangle command. Now, we talked a little bit about command line options when we did the line command, but let's work with the rectangle command now. Uh, to start the rectangle command, I can either go to my rectangle button here on my ribbon toolbar, or I can type in REC and hit enter. Now before I do that, hold on just a second, let me escape out of that. Uh, make sure that the dynamic input button is off. Uh, when we get into command line options, it's real important for you to be able to visualize and understand what I'm talking about. And sometimes with the dynamic input on, those command line options appear over here with your cursor. A little bit, uh, a little bit trickier to visualize. So. I'm going to make sure that my dynamic input is off so everything that I type in is going to occur down here on my command line. So let's start with the rectangle command. REC is the command alias. I'm going to hit enter or hit the space bar. And it's going to ask me for my first corner point. Now, when you're defining a rectangle, you have to understand that it's, at, it's, going, it's going to define your rectangle based on two points. Your first point and then the opposite point of the rectangle. Okay. So if I were to pick my first point here, AutoCAD is going to say, okay, specify the other point. So I'm going to pick another point out here in space. And there I've, I've given it all that it needs to know what and where I need to put my rectangle. I've started my first point here, my second point there, and notice it ends the command. That's all that AutoCAD needed to define that rectangle. Now I'm going to erase this one, and let's talk a little, about, a little bit about the uh, command line options with the rectangle. I'm going to type in REC and hit my space bar, start the rectangle command. Now for my first corner point, I've got some of these options here, chamfer, elevation, fillet, thickness, and width. We'll talk about those in a minute. Let's talk about different ways to define the size of my rectangle first. So I'm just going to pick arbitrarily here in space, out here in space, uh, my first corner point like I did just a moment ago. Now when I go to pick my second point or my opposite corner, I have noticed these command line options in the brackets. I have area, dimension, and rotation. Uh, dimensions is going to allow me to define my rectangle by exactly that, dimensions, the length and the width. Area we'll get into in just a minute, and rotation we'll get into in just a minute. So let's say I picked my first point, and I know that I want a rectangle that's 10 units wide and 10 units tall, or 10 units in width. 10 units in length and 10 units in width. What I need to do is I need to tell AutoCAD, okay, I've picked my first point, now I want to tell you um, how I want to draw my rectangle by defining the dimensions. So on my command line, I'm just going to type in the D, remember the uppercase letter in your option there, and then I'm going to hit enter. Now AutoCAD's going to say, okay, you've told me you want to specify the dimensions. We'll go ahead and let's do that. Tell me the length of your rectangle. Um, I can type in the length here. Notice I've got these um, greater than less than symbols, these brackets and I've got a value in there. By default, AutoCAD gives you a value in those brackets. And what that is, is the last value that you used. Okay, The last time I drew a rectangle, um, and I defined it by a length and a width, I used this value of 10. So if I were to just hit enter, it would use that value by default. If I don't want to use that value by default, or this default value, then I need to go ahead and define a value, and that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to type in, let's say, the number 5. So I want it 5 units in length, and I'm going to hit enter. And then again, it's going to say, okay, now specify the width. And again, it's going to give me a default value of 10. I don't want that value of 10. I want to type in 5 again and hit enter. Now AutoCAD is going to say, okay, you're doing a length of 5 and a width of 5. Now tell me, where do you want this opposite corner? Do you want it up and to the right? down and to the right, down and to the left, or up and to the left. Well, I want it up and to the right, so I'm just going to pick anywhere up here. It doesn't matter. I'm just telling it in which direction at this point. I've already defined the length and the width. Now I'm just telling it in which direction. So I'm just going to pick somewhere out here in space, and I've given AutoCAD everything that I've needed to define that rectangle. Notice it completes the command and gives me a blank command prompt once again. So there I've defined the length, the width, and then the opposite corner, and now I have a 5 by 5 rectangle. Let me erase that and let's start the rectangle command again. Again, I'm going to ignore these, these options right here. We'll talk about those in just a minute. I'm going to pick my first point just arbitrarily down here in space. 
Now this time I'm going to use area instead of dimensions. So let's say I know what area I want. Maybe it's the, the, uh, the area of an acre or um, the area of a box, it, whatever it is, I know the area. So for my command line option, I'm going to type in the letter A and hit enter. Now AutoCAD is going to say, okay, well if you know the area, tell me what the area of the rectangle is. And by default, again, it's got a, a default value here and the default value is 40 units. Well, let's say I want it to be 50 units. So I'll, I'm just going to type in 50 and hit enter. Now it's going to say, okay, I have an area, but you still have to give me a length or a width for me to draw that rectangle. Now here are my two command line options, length and width. By default, it's going to let me put in length. So let's say I wanted to do it by width. So I'm going to type in W and hit enter. Now it's going to say, okay, now give me the width. The default is 5. Well, I don't want it to be 5. Let's say I want it to be 10. So I'm going to type in 10, hit enter, and I've drawn my rectangle. I gave it an area, and then I gave it a width of 10, so it defined the length based on the width and the area. Okay, So that's another way that you can do that. Um, another option that you have for the rectangle, I'm going to specify the first corner point down here and then I have area, we've gone over dimension and area, now let's go over rotation. If I know what rotation or what angle I want to draw this rectangle in, I can type that or I can give it that value. So I'm going to hit R, type in R and hit enter and it's going to say, okay, give me my rotation angle. By default it's zero. Well let's say I want it to be 30, so I'm going to type in a value of 30 and I'm going to hit enter. Remember I told you to keep your eye on your command line and I'm going to tell you a hundred times. Keep your eye on your command line. This will always tell you what AutoCAD is looking for. So I've defined the angle of 30. Now it's asking me to specify the other corner point and I can do it again. I can do it by area or dimensions or I can change the rotation. Let's go ahead and do dimensions. So I'm going to hit D for dimensions. And I'm going to give it a length this time, let's say of, well let's do 5 again. So instead of me typing in 5, it's already there as the default, so all I have to do is hit enter. And then let's say I want the width of 10. It's already there as the default, so I don't have to type anything. I just hit enter. And then now it's going to ask me once again, well point me in the direction that you want this rectangle to go. Well I have all the, the, the specified dimensions already calculated or inputted, so I just need to kind of pull my cursor in the direction I want that rectangle to go and it'll be drawn in that direction. So I'm just going to pull up here and I'm just going to pick a point somewhere out here in space. Now I've drawn a rectangle with a length of 5, a width of 10, at an angle of 30. Now something to be uh, cautious of, let me erase this one. Next time I draw my rectangle, I started my rectangle command, I typed in REC and hit enter. It's going to say the current rectangle mode. It's going to list all the current rectangle modes. Well. It's going to say it's going to give me the the ro current ro excuse me the current rectangle mode um, for the rotation is set at 30. So if I don't want to set the next rectangle I draw with a rotation angle of 30, then I better tell it that I want to change that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start my rectangle command, and this is real simple. You'll you'll realize this. Um, it'll be real. It'll make a lot more sense when you do something like this. You'll set rotation angle to to 30 and then you go to draw your rectangle and you're like, oh, wait a minute, what's going on? Look at your command line. The rotation is automatically set to 30 because I haven't set it back to zero yet. So when I pick my first point, um, I want to, want to, before I pick my second point or give it an area dimension, I want to come over here to rotation, type in R and hit enter and set the rotation angle, notice the default is 30, set it back to zero and hit enter. Now it's going to be bring me back to my second point I can give it area or dimension or just pick a pick, excuse me, pick a point out here in space, which I'll do, and it'll draw my rectangle. Let's go into a couple of the um, other options that you have when you draw a rectangle. I'm going to type in REC, hit my space bar. Uh, this time let's look at chamfer, elevation, fillet, thickness, and width. A couple of these you'll use quite a bit. The other ones you probably won't use um, hardly at all. Let's look at chamfer first. Notice when I, when I draw a rectangle, it's got square corners by default, right? Well, what I can do is I can tell it to chamfer or fill up those uh, corners if I want to. So first I'm going to do chamfer. So I'm going to type in C and hit enter. 
and it's going to say, okay, give me my first chamfer distance for my rectangle. I'm going to type in, and what, when, once you do, once you see me do this, it'll make more sense. I'm going to type in a value of one for the first chamfer distance. Now it's asking me for my second chamfer distance. It's going to automatically use the ch second chamfer di distance. The default is going to be the last one that I put in, but I want it to be two just because I want you to see what's going on. So I'm going to type in two and hit enter. Now when I draw my rectangle, I've got these chamfers. There's a chamfer of one unit on this direction, two in this direction. I don't really like that um, when you use different chamfer distances because it gives you kind of a funky looking rectangle. So where that is good though is if you draw a rectangle and you do chamfer and you have the same distance in both directions. So my first distance is one, my second distance I'm going to set to one and then I'm going to pick this point and pick this point and now it's giving me these nice chamfered corners. So that's helpful. And the, the fillet command works the same way. So I'm going to start my rectangle, type in F for fillet. It's going to ask me for a fillet radius. I'm going to go ahead and leave it at one, so I'm going to hit enter. Now what's going to happen is, when I define my rectangle, it's going to give me a nice radius of one corner or fillet of a radius of one on all my corners, which is very, very helpful sometimes. I'm going to hit erase. Um, now remember, next time I draw my rectangle, it's going to say, hey, your fillet is still set at one. So if you're drawing rectangles, you're like, hey, what's going on? Well, I haven't set my fillet back to zero. So when I draw my rectangle, I need to go back here and hit F for fillet again and set the default to zero. And then I can pick this point and this point and I've got square corners again. So be real careful with that fillet command, especially if you're using very, very small fillets. You may not even notice that you've uh, rounded those corners. Let me erase that and start my rectangle command. Uh, elevation, thickness, and width. Elevation is when I draw my rectangle, what it's going to do is if I set the elevation, let me set E for elevation. Um, if I change the elevation, what it's going to do is it's actually going to lift my, my two-dimensional drawing or lift my two-dimensional rectangle in the Z direction. Okay, So unless you're doing 3D and you're comfortable with that, you probably want to make sure that your elevation is always set at zero. Again, unless you're getting into some 3D things. Let's look at the other ones. Uh, thickness, what this is going to do is again in 3D it's going to change the thickness and I'll just show you, don't worry about, don't worry about what I'm doing here, uh, I just want to show you what it looks like in th 3D. So I'm going to say T for thickness and I'm going to set it to 0.5 and hit enter, draw a rectangle. You don't see anything here because you're looking directly down. But if I come over here and I switch to a 3D view, you'll notice it's giving these, this line a thickness of 0.5. Okay, let me undo and undo. Now again, if you do that, make sure that you set this back to zero. Uh, and again, you, you need to be more familiar with 3D before you get into something like that. So start my rectangle command, set the thickness back to zero, hit enter. Now when I draw my rectangle, um, I don't have that any longer. I just have a normal two-dimensional rectangle. And last but not least, width. Uh, a lot of people will use this, but use it with caution. If you type in W for width, you can set the width of the lines of the rectangle. So let's say uh, I hit W for width and I specify the width of my rectangle. Uh, the default again is zero. Let's say I use 0.2 and I hit enter. Now when I draw my rectangle, notice my lines have a thickness. Be careful with this because what this is, is kind of a, it's, 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 it's not a true thickness um, of these walls. Um, if you click on, let me kind of zoom in, these walls aren't really that thick. It's just visually showing them that thick. So if I were to explode that rectangle, um, there's actually not two lines. There's not an inside line and an outside line. It's just one line with a thickness. So be very careful when you're using that width. Um, I actually kind of recommend against using that width uh, unless you really know what you're doing and know what you want. Um, so those are the different options, so make sure I go back to my width here and set that back to zero. But those are the different options and command line options of the rectangle. And you'll notice in a lot of different auto command, AutoCAD commands you have these command line options just like you do with the rectangle. So be cautious of those and hopefully that will give you a better idea of how those work and how you can use some of those command line options. And we'll be using those quite a bit with uh, some of these other AutoCAD commands. So that's it for this tutorial. I uh, enjoyed it and uh, hope to see you soon in the next tutorial. Thanks so much.